everyone, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create really cute coloring books just like these ones from scratch and have them published on Amazon KDP without the use of any AI. Now you might be wondering, why would I not use any AI when it is so convenient? And while it is true that AI could be really convenient, there are certainly some drawbacks when it comes to using AI for creating coloring books. For example, it could take a lot of trial and error in order to generate an image that is the same as what you had envisioned in your mind. And honestly, sometimes the images that are generated by the AI, they might not even make any sense. Secondly, depending on the AI capabilities or tool that you're using, the image generated by the AI might have a lot of grayscale, which would make them less ideal for creating coloring books. And thirdly, which is a really common issue when it comes to using AI to create coloring books, is that you might very easily be able to generate the interior black and white illustrations, but it is actually really hard to be able to replicate and generate the exact same illustrations in color so that you could put it on the cover of your coloring book. So what ends up happening is that people would have coloring books where the cover is completely different from what is actually inside their book, which sometimes customers may not appreciate too much. So if you're a beginner looking to learn how to create a coloring book from scratch, or if you already previously created some coloring books before and want to learn about some of the options you could leverage in order to use hand-drawn illustrations in your coloring books, then this video is for you. And if you end up enjoying this video, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And now let's get started. So before we actually start designing our book, we need to first decide on the specifications of this book. And this is important because you will need this information as inputs in order to generate the correct book cover size and interior margins for your book. So in my previous coloring book tutorial, I showed you how to create a square shaped coloring book. So in today's video, I'm going to change things up and show you how you could create a rectangular shaped coloring book instead. And the dimensions of our book will be 8.5 by 11 inches. And for the number of pages, I'm going to have 62 pages but you can really choose any number of pages for your book. Just make sure it is at least 24 pages because that is the minimum number of pages required for Amazon KDP. Also, when I say 62 pages, that basically means 31 sheets of paper because the number of pages takes into account both the front and back side of each page. And for coloring books, I highly recommend leaving the back side of all your pages blank, meaning we will only have illustrations printed on the front side of each page. For binding, we will choose paperback as opposed to hardcover as this is the most common when it comes to coloring books and for interior pages we will choose black and white because we're creating a coloring book there is really no reason why we would need the pages printed in color Let me now show you how to get started with creating the interior of our coloring book. The first step is we want to come to the KDP website. Under their help topics, they have a page that talks about trim size, bleeds, and margins. This link I have also linked below in the description section of this video so you can easily reference it when you go ahead and make your coloring book interior. So what we want to do now is scroll down from here and the section we're looking for is the section called bleed. And there we go. So when we say that the interior has no bleed, that means there is a little white space all around each of your pages, essentially creating a border around your graphic and text elements on each page. When we say that the interior is with bleed, that means there is no white border around your page and your graphic or text elements essentially bleeds to the edge of each of your pages. So in the context of a coloring book, what that means is in the case of no bleed, there will be a white space around your page. And then if you choose with bleed, then your graphic graphic elements essentially fills the entire page all the way to the edges of the page. I personally prefer choosing width bleed because that gives me the option to have certain elements go all the way to the edge of the page if I choose to, but either one would work. Okay, so what we need from here is once we decided we want bleed or no bleed, then we'll come down here to the tables. We want to pick the one that says examples of page size with and without bleed for kdpamazon.com because the one below is for Japan, so likely not applicable for most of you as well. So we're going to expand this and you'll see a table down here. So what this table tells us is the page size and dimension that we'll need to put into Canva later to help set up our interior pages because we want to make sure that we set up the page properly so that we don't run into issues when we upload it to KDP for printing later. And as you recall when we discussed the specifications of the coloring book in the previous step we were going to make a rectangular coloring book which will be 8.5 by 11 inches which is this one here but we won't look at this column because we had chosen with bleed so instead we will be looking at the corresponding row on this column instead which would be this number right here so this is a number that you would want to put into canva later so now let us hop on over to canva to put this in 
Okay, so what you want to do is log into Canva, which I've already done so here. And for those of you who are not familiar with Canva, this is basically a very powerful online design tool with a huge selection of design elements, templates, and features that you can use to bring your creative vision to life for anything from notebooks to posters to social media content or even children's storybooks. So first of all, make sure you log in. And if you haven't already gotten your account set up, you will need to set one up. I have included a link below this video where you can sign up for your Canva account and there are basically two options when it comes to Canva. There's the free account where there's no time limit, but you don't have access to as many creative elements. And then you can also sign up for a 30 day free trial of the pro account. This will give you access to Canva's entire library of design elements and features. And after the 30 day trial period, you can decide if you want to pay for it on an ongoing basis, or you can also choose to downgrade back to the free option. Okay, now that we're in Canva, we're going to set up our interior page and we're going to use the dimensions that I had just shown you on the KDP page here earlier, which is 8.625 by 11.25 inches. So let's go ahead and put that into Canva. So what you want to do is to click on create a design and then you're going to go to custom size and you want to make sure you change from pixels to inches and this is very important so please don't forget this and so now let's put in 8.625 by 11.25 and we're going to click on create a new design and there we go. Now we're not completely done yet because we now also need to set up the margin so that none of our critical elements get cut off during printing. So we're going to go back to the same page I was showing you earlier and now we're going to go to margin instead. So we're going to scroll down to where they talk about the margins here. So there we go. So under the margin section, you'll see a table here. So under the table, you'll see page count. So this is where we want to look for just so our book will fall into this category, which means we will need these margins. But then again, remember that we had asked for width bleed. So for outside margin, we'll need to use this column as opposed to this column. And an inside margin will be the same regardless whether you use bleed or no bleed. So basically we need 0.375 inches on the inside margins and also 0.375 inches on the outside margins. So remember that number and now we're going to hop back over to Canva to put those margins in. Okay, so now to add in our margins, the first thing you want to do is to come to file, go to settings, and then click on show rulers and guides. And you can also bring out your rulers by pressing the shortcut key shift plus R. Either way, let's click on this. And what you'll see is that rulers have been added on your template. So what I'm going to do is just close this out for now so I can see the page and I'm going to zoom in a bit more. And so what we're going to do is to drag the margins out from these rulers. So you'll see the numbers on the top and you want to get it to as close to 0.375 inches as possible because those are the margins that we want to add to all sides of this page. So you'll see we're at 0.372. So now it's a bit too big. So what we're going to do is zoom in a little bit more as that will allow us to be slightly more precise. And so let's try to get to as close to 0.375. Okay, so 0.376, not bad. We're just slightly over. And the thing is, if you can't get it to exactly 0.375, that's okay as well. But you would rather be slightly over than slightly under. So now that we have one side of the margin created, what we want to do is come to elements and we're going to go to the shape section and drag in a square. So now we, what we want to do is to shrink this square to the size of this margin. And the trick I'm going to share with you is to hold down the shift key while you shrink it because that will make sure it continues to stay as a square. Others it might turn into a rectangle. So you want to get as close as possible or maybe even just slightly smaller and you can drag it back out. So you want to be here. You want to drag it to exactly the size of that margin. So what you're going to do now is copy that square, control C and then control V and paste it back on the page and then we're going to drag this square out to the other sides of the page and just use it as a guide for us to create the margins on the other sides. Just cut and paste it here drag this down as well. Once we have our margins created, we no longer need these squares so we can delete them. Okay, and now as you might recall, we were going to create 62 pages for our book. So I'm going to come into this grid view here and I'm going to duplicate this 62 times. I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste with control V 62 and you can see the page number is increasing here and you want to just get to 62. And there we go. So now we have 62 pages. We come back out and you'll see all of these pages now have the margins already set up. 
So now we're on to the really fun part of designing our interior pages. And as part of this step, I'm going to go over three different options you could consider if you want to leverage genuine hand-drawn illustrations for your coloring book. The first option you could consider is to hire an illustrator to create the illustrations for your coloring book from platforms like Upwork or Fiverr. You will just need to take time to look through the portfolio's pricing and reviews for all the available artists to find the one that would be the best fit for you. This option will likely be a bit more pricey, but it will allow you to create custom illustrations specifically for your book and also support traditional artists while doing so. So the second option would be to draw your own illustrations. If you are already an artist or illustrator and have experience with drawing and creating digital art, then this would likely be the best option for you. Now for the rest of us, if we have never professionally illustrated or done any digital art before, but really want to give it a try, then our sponsor for today's video, Skillshare, would be the perfect solution for you. Being able to actually draw the illustrations for my own books has always been a dream of mine. I recently completed this course on Skillshare on how to illustrate my own coloring book using Procreate and absolutely loved it. It is in-depth yet beginner friendly and the step-by-step -step instructions covered everything I needed to know and made the learning process so fun and seamless. If you're not familiar with Skillshare, it is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry experts across illustration, design, videography, productivity, and much more. With the summer coming up, it would be a great time to learn new skills on Skillshare and take your KDP journey to the next level. And here's some good news. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. So why not get started today? So if you feel that it is a bit too pricey for you to hire an illustrator and you may not have the time to dedicate to learning how to draw your own illustrations right now, but still want to be able to leverage genuine hand-drawn illustrations for your coloring book, then the third option I'm about to share with you might be the perfect fit for you. The Publisher's Vault is a membership-based platform which would provide you with unlimited access to a very wide range of unique hand-drawn illustrations which you could easily leverage for your coloring books at a very affordable cost. Right now, now there are over 85 packs of hand-drawn designs available on the platform and some of the examples are what is shown here but this is just a small selection of what is actually available and within each of the packs you'll actually get 30 black and white character drawings an example is here 30 black and white background drawings as well as 30 colored character drawings and 30 colored background drawings and this is actually really awesome for creating coloring books because you can really mix and match the different backgrounds with the different characters and you can even combine multiple characters onto one background and make the coloring page uniquely yours. You can even mix and match across different packs to create your coloring book. And the other fun fact I wanted to share is that this publisher's vault is actually created by a father and his team of artists and also inspired by his two daughters. So the monthly membership cost for the publisher's vault is $27 a month usually but if you use the link that I have provided in the description below you can actually try out the publisher's vault for one day only for one dollar just to make sure that this is something that would be a good fit for you before you commit for the long term and even for the $27 a month it is actually a really good deal because you can access all of their packs with more that are going to be continuously added month over month and I know they have over hundreds that have already been created but have yet to be uploaded to the vault so as a member you continuously receive free packs of illustrations that you can use for as many coloring books as you want all right so now now let's go ahead and use the Publisher's Vault to create a coloring book together. So I have already selected the pack that I want to use, but if you're not sure, you can click through each of these to find the one that you like. For me, I'm going to come over to M because I want to use this Martial Arts Animals pack. So once you've selected the pack that you want, all you need to do is click the download button and the pack will automatically be downloaded to your computer in a zip file. Okay, and so let's come over to our downloaded pack and I'm going to open it up and you'll see that there are a number of different folders so each of them have something different in there so in the first folder we will find the black and white versions of the characters that are provided within the pack so you'll see there are different animals doing martial arts here that you can use for your coloring book so now we come back out here you'll see the backgrounds and so these are the black and white backgrounds that you can use for your coloring pages and you can mix and match them with the characters that I was just showing you. And coming back out here, we also have a folder that contains already created coloring pages which already overlays the character on top of the backgrounds, but I personally prefer to create my own. And then on here, there are actually some options that you could use for activity books. 
So it's just an extra option here. And now let's go back here. And this folder should be all the colored illustrations. So this would be the colored backgrounds. And this would be perfect for using on the book cover because you will have the exact same coloring page in black and white as well within the same pack. And then here is the characters in color. They're all very, very cute. Okay, so now I'm gonna use these images to create the coloring book. So let's hop back over to Canva. What you wanna do is to upload the images that you see here, the ones that you know you're gonna use for your coloring book onto Canva. So let's hop back over to Canva. And so the first thing I wanted to do is to create this book belongs to page for my coloring book. And I've already gone ahead and uploaded the images that I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna select them here. So this is the image from the publisher's vault. So I'm going to just center it and make sure it doesn't go over the margins. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to add some text to it because I want to put this book belongs to. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. Let's say 40. Now I'm going to choose a different font. It's up to you what font you want to use. And so what we want to do now is click on effects and I'm going to put an outline and the color of the outline would be black, but the text itself would be white. And you can also make the line a bit thicker if you want by controlling this line here. If you move it up, it's gonna make it thicker. And so now I'm gonna go to elements and add a line. That's where the child could hand write their name. And then let's add in our characters just to make it more fun. So let's say I wanna use this rhino. I can put it here and just make sure none of the elements are going over the margins, which I think we're good right now. Okay, that looks perfect. So now again, I'm going to leave the back side of this page, which is page two blank. Then on page three is when I'm going to put in my first coloring page. So let's say I want to use this as the background. Similarly, you want to center it and make sure it's not going over any of the margins bunny. I'm going to put it here. And if you want to even use some of the Canva elements, you can do that too. For example, I want to do apple, black, and white. I might be able to find an apple that I can use. So let's say I want to use this one. I can also add these things to the coloring page to make it even more unique. And I'm going to layer it so that this goes on top of the apple layer bring forward so it's like the bunny's holding the apple and the other thing I could add as well is just anything like you can label it you can put in this case is martial arts I can put some sound effects here so I can put like how bigger and again I'm gonna go to effects and put the outline I want the outline to be black but I want the text itself to be white and there we go that could be one page so in the interest of time, I had gone ahead and created the illustrations for the rest of my coloring pages using the same method I had just shown you. So let's go to the grid view and take a look at all of them. And the key thing that you want to note here is that you want to make sure there's a blank page in between each of the illustration pages because that is basically the back side of each page. And for coloring books, we generally want to leave the back side blank because just in case when kids are coloring, their markers might go through. So you don't want to have illustrations illustrations on both sides of the page. So now once we're happy with this, what we want to do is to download our interior. So let's go to share and what you want to do is go to download and for file type, make sure you pick PDF print and then we want to flatten PDF and down here for color profile, you can leave it at RGB, but if you have the pro account, then I would recommend picking CMYK, which is best for professional printing. So I'm going to go and click on download. And there we go, now we've completed our interior pages and we can move on to working on the cover. Before we start designing our coloring book cover, we will first need to set up the cover template in Canva. What you want to do now is hop onto Amazon KDP Cover Calculator, and I will include the link in the description section of this video so you can easily reference it later. So this is basically where you would want to enter all the specs that we had decided on earlier, like the number of pages, the size of the book, etc. And once we have all this information in the form, it will basically help us generate a book cover template which we can use in Canva later. So let's go ahead and fill in this form. So binding type, we're going to select paperback for a coloring book. Interior type would be black and white. Paper type, we're going to pick white paper. 
Reading direction would be from left to right. Measurement units will be in inches and the interior trim size, as you may remember, we had wanted to pick 8.5 by 11 inches and page count, we had decided to be 62 pages. So we're gonna go calculate dimensions and what we want to do is then click on download template. So once we have the template downloaded, what we want to do is to open up the PNG file. And here you will see 17.390 and 11.25 is the overall dimensions, which will include the back cover and the front cover. And this is the number that you would want to enter into Canva. So let's hop on over to Canva to do that. Okay, so once you're back on Canva, you want to click on create a design and then come to custom size at the bottom. And then again, just make sure we're in interest and you want to enter that overall dimensions on the book cover template that you had just generated from Katie. It is 17.390 by 11.25. So let's go ahead and click on create new design. And there we go. So once we have created the template here, what we want to do is to go back to the PNG file of the cover template that you had just downloaded. You want to click on copy and then you want to come over here and just click on paste. And if you are having trouble with copying and pasting, you can either just use the control V shortcut to paste it. That usually works. And if even that doesn't work, then what you want to do is go to upload and actually just upload the cover template and that should work. Okay. So now what you want to do is to drag out this cover template to the exact size and it should fit exactly because you had created this template based on the dimensions on the cover template noted here. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. So now that we have the cover template set up, we're now ready to design our cover. I had already gone ahead to download the relevant images from the publisher's vault and uploaded them onto Canva that I plan on using for my cover. So first of all, I'm going to pull in the background and what I'm going to do is to resize it and make it bigger so that it fills the entire front cover. Now I'm going to use the same image for the back cover, but what I'm going to do is to copy with control C and then paste again with control V and then I'm going to line it up here, but that doesn't look too good, right? So I'm going to flip this around just so the overall image looks more coherent so it looks like everything is connected but now the other problem I have is that there shouldn't be two suns so I'm gonna use a little bit of Canva AI magic to help me with this and so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the Canva AI assistant click on magic eraser here and then I will brush over the part within the image that I want the AI to help me make this appear so basically erase it from the picture and this is perfect. So now I'm quite happy with this. I'm gonna go back and now you'll see that I have an image without that second sun. Okay, so now what I wanna do is actually select these two images and go to transparency here, which is this checkered box. And I'm gonna bring down the transparency just so I can see through it and still see the template behind because I wanna make sure when I start putting in the images and the various illustrations for my cover that I'm aware of where the margins are and also where the barcode is because we don't want to put any critical elements or words over the spine or being cut off at the margin, as well as being covered by the barcode here, which is this little yellow area. So I just want to leave it transparent so that I can see through. And now I'm going to bring in the animals. So let's just, you can really place them whichever way that you want. Use your creativity and just make sure nothing goes over the spine or over the barcode. And I'm going to put it here. I'm going to put this one here. I might just rip it over around, resize it a little bit. Let's see, and then I'm going to put the rhino here. Maybe I'm going to this other rhino here. Maybe flip it around and then I'll have this one put around as well. So they look like they're facing each other. Awesome. So now what I'm going to do is to bring this one into and I'm going to use it later once I put in the title. So let's go back to text. I'm going to add a heading and then in terms of font, I'm going to use this and let's put in zoo. Let's edit the text here. Go to effects again. I'm going to do the same thing as what I did in the interior. Go to outline, change the outline to black, and then change the font itself to white so that there's like a little black outline around it. Go back to effects. I'm going to adjust the thickness of the text just around here, and I'm going to adjust the size. So I'm going to put zoo martial arts, and you can really name your book anything you want. So I'm going to copy and paste this, and I'm going to put 
martial arts and I'm going to adjust the size a little bit fits on the same page zoom in a little bit and now you'll see the words are covering the animals. So what I want to do is to play around with the layers and have the animals be on top of the words. I'm going to put bring, actually I'm going to put bring to front. And so now the words are being covered a little bit by the animals. As we'll see the other way around. I'm going to shift it around. Similarly, I'm going to adjust this to be a little smaller. Maybe the words are a little too thick. So I'm going to change that there. So around 66% or 66. All right. So now I can move the bunny up here. It's like it's stepping on the T. Perfect. And at the bottom, I'm going to copy and paste another set of words. Bottom, and I'm going to put coloring book and adjust the font if needed to make it fit there we go now on the back what you want to do is usually try to put some samples of what the inside pages look like so to do that what you can do is go back to your interior file and you can download a few of these in jpeg so what you want to do is go to share and then download you can either keep a png but i usually just use jpg it's a bit smaller in size and then I'm just going to select a few pages. So let's just select page three, five, and seven. I'm going to click on done. And I'm going to download these. Okay, so now these have been downloaded. I'm going to go to upload. And I'm going to go to upload files. And I will select the three files that I had just downloaded from the other file. So you'll see these. Okay, so what you can do is bring them into your file, them, shrink them. And then just make sure they're the same size. Okay, perfect. So now what you want to do is to just lay them out nicely, whichever way you want. And now I want to add another set of words. Usually at the back you have a bit of a description. It's really up to you what you want to put. And I'm going to make the font the same. This time I won't do the, the effects. I'll just keep it black. And maybe I'll shrink the size of this to say 25. And so now what I want to add is a little description for this book. So I can put, let's say, a fun and cute coloring book for all ages. Immerse yourself in this martial arts and Animal Kingdom. If you feel like the words are spaced too far apart, I can come here and reduce the line spacing so that they're closer together. There we go. Move these ones down as well. All right, this looks great. What you want to do is move the transparency back up. But before we do that, let's do a quick look to make sure there are no critical elements along any of these red margins. So I think we're good. There's nothing over the barcode, and so nothing is over the spine. So I think everything looks great. So now we're going to select the images for the back and front cover again, and we're going to move the transparency back up. So I usually just leave the cover template behind these images because I have it fully covered, but I know historically there are some people who have experienced issues with that when uploading to KDP. So to be safe, you can actually just go ahead and remove the template behind this. So I'm just going to click on it and delete it. So now you see that that's gone and I'm gonna just come back and put this back in properly so now I'm gonna go ahead and download the cover template that we had just created so let's go ahead and download and what you want to select is PDF print again you want to flatten the PDF and again we're gonna pick CMYK best for professional printing and click on download and there we go So once you've completed your book cover and interior and have downloaded those files from Canva onto your computer, then we're now ready for the final step, which is publishing it on Amazon KDP. Right now, what you want to do is to log into your Amazon KDP account. And if you don't have one yet, then you'll need to set one up. And once you've logged in, what you want to do is click on this create button here and you'll see that they're going to ask you whether you want to create an ebook, paperback, or hardcover. So for purposes of our coloring book, we're going to click on create paperback. Okay, so now you'll see a series of questions that are going to be asked on this form as part of the publishing process. So the first question is language, and basically you need to pick the primary language that your book is written in. In our case, we're going to leave it in English, but if your book is going to be in a different language, then you can select the appropriate language here. For book title, we want to create a book title that is representative of the actual book itself so that when customers read it, they know exactly what it's about. So in our case, we're going to put martial arts, animal, zoo, coloring book for kids. So subtitle basically gives you an additional opportunity to further describe your book to your potential customers. Although it's optional, I always try to put something in there. So for our case, we're going to put in fun coloring pages with animals for children ages four to eight. 
So series, this book is not part of a series, so we can skip over this. We don't have an edition number, so I'm going to skip over that as well. So for author name, you can either use your real name or a pen name. To be honest, most people use a pen name. So in my case, I'm just going to put in cute and fun publishing. This is the same name I had used for a previous demo video, so I'm just going to keep it consistent. And then contributors, I don't have any, so I'm going to skip over it. And so description is where you want to provide a detailed description of what your book is about. And this is also an opportunity for you to entice the customer to purchase your book. So you want to highlight all the great things about your book, describe it in a lot of detail, and it's really up to you how much detail you want to go into. But for purposes of our book here, just as an example, this is what I'm going to put in my description. So I might want to fix the font a little bit. I don't think I need it in bold. And so I said, leap into a world where animals master martial arts in this fun and cute coloring book tailored for children who adore both animals and martial arts. This engaging coloring book features high quality, easy to color illustrations of awesome animals like alpacas delivering karate kicks, rhinos showing off judo flips, and bunnies tackling kung fu moves. This coloring book is perfect as a thoughtful gift or a fun addition to any child's collection. And below that, I also wanted to add some specifications about the book itself. So I mentioned that it's single-sided printing, and this is definitely a good thing for coloring books because we want to prevent the situation of when children are coloring that it leads to the other side of the page. And then the other piece of information is really just on the book dimension itself. So it's 8.5 by 11 inches. It's going to be printed on premium white paper and I've decided that I'm going to print it on a durable matte cover instead of a glossy cover, but it's completely up to you. So the other thing I want to mention is for your description and your titles, you can also take a look at other people's books on Amazon, like some of your competitors that are selling in a similar niche, because you can kind of take inspiration from that as well. But what you do not want to do is to copy it word for word because then you'll run into copyright issues. So just really review other people's books more for inspiration. And now we can move on to the next question. So for publishing rights, we're going to click on I own the copyright and I hold necessary publishing rights. This answer would be no. And then for reading age, you'll be dependent on your book. But in my case, I'm going to pick four to eight just to align with what I had noted in the subtitle above. And primary marketplace basically is the location where you expect the majority of your book sales. So I'm going to leave it at amazon.com, but you're free to choose a different marketplace if you think that most of your sales are going to come from a different marketplace. So in the next step, we have to pick three categories that best describes our book. And it's really important that we try to pick only categories that are truly relevant to our book because we want to make sure that our book is placed in the right category so that our potential customers can find it. So let's go ahead and start. So we go to choose category and what we're going to do is select one. And you can look through the list to see which one makes the most sense for your book as it may be different from what I'm showing here. But in my case, I'm going to click on children's books and you'll see some category here and I am going to click on activities, crafts, and games. And in terms of subcategory, I will click on activity books and that should give me coloring books as one of the options. So I'm going to click on this and in our case it's fiction. And so we have one category added. Now we're going to add another category and I'm going to go back to children's books again. I'm going to go to animals. And then our book has a number of different types of animals. So I think what I can do is click on a more generic word. So let's do mammals. And then I'm going to click on fiction again. And then we need a third category. So let's go ahead and do this again. So we can take a look if there's anything else that might be applicable here. But I think for my purposes, probably makes the most sense to stick to children's books. In terms of subcategories, again, we can take a look at what else is here. Actually, I'm going to go to animals again and perhaps this time I could I could either pick one of the animals that I know is in my book but I think here I can also pick Sue because that's part of my book title name as well so I'm going to click on this and I'm going to click on fiction but really just think about it for your own book just to make sure the categories are appropriate and so we're going to go ahead and save the categories okay so now we have to answer the next question which is does your book classify as any of these types so low content book so in this case we wouldn't be considered a low content book low content book are basically books that have pages that are identical every single page. For example, a line journal, every page is a line. So in our case, we actually have different illustrations and different designs on each page. So then we wouldn't be considered a low content book. So we wouldn't check this off. And large print book, 16 point size, like our book doesn't really have a lot of text. So I'm going to leave that unchecked as well. So in terms of the next step, we want to pick up to seven keywords that would best describe our book. And so we want to put in a keyword that is relevant such that when people search for that keyword, 
keyword and they see our book, they will see that our book is highly relevant and will likely purchase it. Secondly, you want to make sure that there is likely going to be demand for that keyword. So if you put in a keyword that might be very relevant, but no one ever searches for that keyword, then that's also not a really good choice. And then thirdly, you want to also make sure that the keyword is not too competitive. So you might have a keyword that is really relevant to your book that there is definitely going to be high search volume, but is also going to be completely saturated because there's 40,000 books that are under the same keyword, then it would be very hard for your book to actually make it up to the first few pages of Amazon and even be seen by potential customers. So what we want to do is make sure we pick a relevant keyword that is of high demand and also not too saturated and not too competitive. So there are actually many tools out there that you could rely on to help you pick the appropriate keywords. And I'm going to show you one later on. But before I do that, I'm also going to show you a quick and dirty way without having to use any tools in case that's what you prefer. What I want to do is to go to amazon.com and you want to make sure that you're signed out. You're not signed in because if you're signed in, then it'll remember all your previous searches and then whatever you search for, they'll kind of cater to what you had previously searched for to make sure that it's relevant to you. And so we don't really want that for purposes of this exercise. So what you want to do is just start searching for something that is relevant to the book that we had just created. So for example, I could try putting in martial arts coloring book for kids. So this is definitely a very relevant search term for our book because our book is a coloring book with animals doing martial arts. And we'll see that the results, there are only 131 results, which is really good from a competitive perspective. There are not a whole lot of books that are currently categorized under this keyword, which means if someone does search for this keyword, they are more likely to be able to see us. But the problem is we don't really know if there is a high demand for this keyword. So this is where the other tool that I'm going to be showing you shortly will help Help us answer that question. But for now, if you're going to use this quick and dirty way of determining your keywords, what you want to do is put in relevant search terms here and then look at the results. And if it's around 10,000 or less, I think that is okay from a competitive perspective. It's just that you won't have a lot of information about the demand, which is also a critical piece in making sure that you pick the right keywords. I'll give you another example before I hop over to the tool that I'm about to show you. And so let's say if we put cute animal coloring book for kids and then you'll see some recommendations here let's just say for us it's four to eight so let's pick this then you see that there are actually 40,000 results here so that is a little bit too competitive that means there are a lot of books that are already categorized in this keyword and we probably don't want to pick this keyword so that's just a quick example just to show you how you could use this quick and dirty way to determine your keywords so now I'm going to show you how I would leverage this other tool that I've been using which will also help to answer the question in addition to knowing whether it's competitive or not, we'd also be able to know what the search demand is for that key term. So this is the tool I wanted to show you. It's part of the self-publishing titans website and they have actually a lot of different tools that are all really cool. But for purposes of today's demo, I just wanted to show you this one tool that can help you with your keywords determination. So they actually have a Chrome extension for this same capability as well. But since I already have the web version open, I'm just going to show you on the web version. So what you can do is, so obviously you want to pick the appropriate marketplace. So in my case, I'm using amazon.com as my primary marketplace. So I'm going to keep it there. And then what you can do is put in a search term. So let's say I want to put animal coloring book for kids four to eight. And it will actually show you, and the great thing is it shows you the search volume and search results. So the search volume will tell you how in demand that key term is, like how many people are actually searching for these. And then the search results tell you how many books are already ranked as part of these keywords. So if it's anything that is way above 10,000, then I probably wouldn't pick it. But if it's sort of around the 10,000 mark, then I think it's good. So the great thing is they also have a demand and opportunity indicator here, which shows you in a color-coded way whether these keywords might be a good choice. For example, animal coloring book for kids four to eight, anything five or above for demand and opportunity is something that I would find acceptable to put in my keywords. And if it's something like cute animal coloring book for kids four to eight, this one shows search volume of 2,800, but the search results is 52,000, which makes it way too competitive. And that's why you see the opportunity is only one. The great thing about this tool is also shows you other Amazon search terms that you could potentially consider. So you 
take a look and see if any of these are relevant to your book. And you can also take a look to see if they're considered a good search term based on the demand opportunity and also the stats over here in terms of search volume and search results. Okay, so now let's hop back over to my KDP forum and complete the keywords. So using the method that I had just shown you, I have now populated all seven of my keywords so we can move on to the next step. So in terms of the publication date, you would want to select publication date and release date are the same if this is the first time you're ever publishing this book, which is most likely the case for most of us. But if your book for whatever reason has previously been published before, then you would want to select the second option and put in the date that it was previously published. So in my case, I'm going to pick publication date and release date are the same. And then going to release date, you would need to pick between release my book for sale now. So keep in mind that even if you pick this option, it could take up to 72 hours for Amazon to review your book to make sure there aren't any issues from their perspective, whether that be copyright issues or formatting issues. And so even if you select this option, it's not going to go live immediately. It's going to take up to 72 hours for your book to go live. And you could also, if you prefer, schedule your book's release, which means you don't want it to be published, say, in the next 72 hours, but you prefer for it to be published in a week's time or in two weeks' time. You could schedule the book's release time and put in the specific date that you want. But in my case, I'm going to just pick release my book for sale now and then save and continue. Okay, so as part of publishing on Amazon KDP, you can actually have them assign an ISBN number for you. If you already have an ISBN number for your book, you could also use that. But in my case, I don't have one, so I'm going to ask Amazon to assign one for me. So I'm going to click on Assign ISBN, and there we go. So now we're on to picking our print option. Given this is a coloring book, we don't need the interior to be printed in color. So we're going to pick black and white interior with white paper. So in case you're wondering why I didn't pick cream paper, cream paper is more of that yellowish paper that I usually use for novels. So in my case, I'm going to stick with white paper. Okay, so trim size in our case, we have created an 8.5 by 11 inch book. So we want to select this option. And then for bleed settings, we had used with bleed. So so we want to pick that option. And in terms of paperback cover finish, you can either pick matte or glossy. So in this case, I'm going to pick matte. So now's the fun part. We get to upload the manuscript and the cover that we had previously created and downloaded from Canva. So I'm going to go ahead and click on upload manuscript, which is the interior. And I'm going to go to the interior file that I had previously downloaded. All right, so we've successfully uploaded our interior. So now we're going to go ahead and upload the cover. So if you don't already have a cover, you could use their cover creator to make your book cover. But in our case, we already have a cover. So we're going to go ahead and upload that. So let's click on upload your cover file. And I'm going to go select the cover that I had downloaded from Canva previously. Okay, and it's telling us that our cover has also been uploaded successfully. Now there's a question that asks you, does your cover include a barcode? So in our case, we don't already have a barcode on our cover that we have just designed. So what we want to do is leave it unchecked, like leave this one unchecked, and then have Amazon KDP add a barcode for us when they print it. So this is a section where you'll have to fill in information about whether your book was generated using any sort of AI capabilities. And if you had clicked yes, then you'll see that it'll ask you, okay, did you use AI for your text? Did you use AI for your images? Did you use AI for any translations? So you'll want to appropriately select the option that makes the most sense for you. In our case, we would actually click on no because as part of this tutorial, we have not used any AI at all. So we're gonna select no. And now we can preview our books. So we can click on launch previewer and and Amazon KDP is going to try to put a preview for us of our entire book and so that we can take a look to make sure there aren't any issues with any of the critical elements being over the margins, for example. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. Okay, so now you see that Amazon is showing you a preview of your book cover and later we're going to click through the interior pages as well. But as part of this step, what you want to do is to make sure none of the critical elements like the characters or the title of your book is going beyond any of these margins, which is the red line right here. And also nothing is being covered by the barcode or going over the spine. So once you're comfortable with it, you want to do the same thing. Click to the next page to see your interior and basically do the same check specifically for making sure that none of the critical elements are going past this gray dotted line, which is the margin, because if you go past that, then there's a chance that it might get cut off during printing. And what you want to do is to continue to click through and just make sure you check for the same thing on every single page. And once you're comfortable with it and having clicked through all of the pages, then what you can do is come down here and click on approve. 
So this will take us back to the KDP upload form and we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom. And now you'll see that Amazon has populated our printing costs. So Amazon will charge us $2.84 to have each of our books printed. And so what you want to make sure is that your price is higher than this so that you'd be making a positive margin. And we're going to take a closer look at pricing and costs on the following page. All right, so we're on to the next page. So for territories, I usually leave it at all territories, which means I have the worldwide rights to have this book sold anywhere in the world. But if in your case, for whatever reason, you're only able to sell in certain territories, then you can click on the second button here. And in terms of primary marketplace, I'm going to leave it at amazon.com. And so now we're on to the pricing section. So how pricing works for Amazon KDP is you would put in a list price, which is the price that your customers will see when they buy your book. And that would be the price that they would pay. So let's say if I want to charge them $8.99 for this book, then you'll see that Amazon automatically calculates the royalty amount that you'll be getting and also the printing costs that you'll be charged. So the royalty amount is basically based on 60% of your list price and then subtract from that the 284 printing costs, which gets us to 255. And you can play around with your price. Like obviously if you move up the price, then your royalty will be higher. It went from 255 to 315, or if you go lower, then you're going to be making a little less, which is only 195. So for now, I'm going to leave it at 899 for purposes of this book. The thing you might want to keep in mind as well is you could price it as high as you want, but at the same time, you need to be cognizant of what other people on Amazon are charging for similar books, because if you're way higher than them, then no customer would ever buy your book. And then at the same time, if you're too low, then you might end up having a negative margin, which is not something that you want. So you want to price it just about right. And I know a lot of people take the strategy of pricing lower at the beginning so that they could attract sales. And then once they gain that momentum, then they'll move their price higher. And so that is something that you could consider, but just to let you know how the pricing works. And so for us, I'm comfortable with the 899. And as you can see, once I put in the 899 for amazon.com, the form automatically helps me populate all of the pricing for the other marketplaces as well. So we're good with the pricing. So in terms of terms and conditions, like I mentioned, it could take up to 72 hours after you hit the publish button today for Amazon to do a check on your book to make sure they're comfortable with it in terms of the quality as well as the formatting. And they'll come back to you if there are any issues. But if there are no issues, then you can expect your book to go live within 72 hours. Once we're done with that, then we're good and we can click on publish your paperback book. And we're done. And this takes us to the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please don't forget to subscribe and give me a big thumbs up. And I'll see you in my next video.